All right, so our first question, uh, like I said, we're only going to do a few of these, um, but we're going to start off with this one, which is a three-story building with no basement slab on grade, has a column spacing of 30 by 30, and an assumed live load of 80 PSF pounds per square foot for the floor and 30 PSF for the roof. If the dead load for both floor and roof is 20 PSF, and if the square footing below one of the interior columns is 5 foot 9 in length and also in width, what should the allowable soil bearing pressure be? So, okay, what is, what's going on here? What's the, what's the gist of the question about? So if we were to start from the beginning, I think one of the big thing, the parentheses, slab on grade, just indicates that, you know, people are like, well, why is it on there? The main reason is slab on grade means that the load is going to be on the ground, so on, directly onto the earth. And so because of that, it won't impart any load onto a column. So we don't have to worry about that ground floor. So I think that's the first thing you can think about. So we only have to worry about the elevated floors. So what you're saying here is if this is our, uh, my poorly drawn building here, um, if we have three stories, if there's somebody standing here on that first floor, the load that they represent is going straight to the ground. Right. So it's not being held up by any beams and columns, uh, anything like that. That's right. However, if I'm standing on this floor here, that is that load is actually following the beam and then eventually to the column and, and then, then to our, footing. To our yep. footing down there. So the first thing you've noticed here is because of slab on grade, we're really talking about the second floor and the third floor in terms of adding up the loads. Right. And the roof. Don't forget the and roof, roof. Mike. Yes, <laughs> and the roof. <laughs> Already off to a good start. Yeah. Uh, so, okay. So that's the first sort of key thing that you noticed. What else do you notice? Well, the, in terms of dimensions, it gives us a 30 foot by 30 foot uh, base spacing. And it doesn't give us any other information. Um, you know, as you read through, it says the interior column. So really, in terms of uh, figuring out the load, we need to look at tributary area times the actual load in terms of pounds per square foot. I look at it in terms of hierarchy. Sometimes like just looking at some of these units isn't enough of a clue. And I think in this case, having pounds per square foot, we have to multiply by some sort of square foot number in order to get our load. And so here, the only dimension that's given really for in terms of the, lay the plan layout is 30 foot by 30 foot. And so we know that we're looking at a tributary area of 30 times 30, and hence 900 square feet. So Actually. I'm sketching out a framing plan here with a little tributary area. So this is that tributary area for that column. Mm -hmm. um, and it's halfway and halfway to all the other um, uh, elements of structure. Now, this could actually be quite a lot more complicated depending on the exact way that the joists or beams or whatever are done. But the sort of typical assumption without any more information would be that you would take this as half the distance from there to there, and then same thing going the other direction. So typically, as architects um, looking at some of these designs, you're just trying to get the preliminary size, a reasonable size to start out with. And maybe you'll have an engineer on board later on to help you guys really narrow down the design. But it's good as architects to start with reasonable sizes and show them on your drawing so that your engineers know that you, you know, you, you know what you're doing. So you don't laugh at us, Middleton? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Nice not to be laughed at. Uh, so our tributary area is then equal to 900 square feet. Uh, and as you pointed out, we have it uh, on the second floor and on the third floor and on the roof. Yes. So it's all of those 900 square foot areas. Right. And so next, we figured out how much our tributary area is. So tributary area refers to how much load that that column is carrying. And then the second part is, let's figure out how much load we have on each of these floors. So let's start with the roof. So on the roof, um, it says that we have a dead load of 20 pounds per square foot plus a live load of 80 pounds per square foot. Oh, no, 30 pounds per square foot. Sorry about that. For a total load on the roof of 50 pounds per square foot. And then on the second and the third floor, they have the same loading. 
Um, and so we have a dead load of 20 pounds per square foot, and then we have a live load of 80 pounds per square foot. So we have 100 pounds per square foot for each floor. So what you can do is you can take the tributary and multiply by the load at each floor, or you can, um, because all of this is getting added up into each of the columns and eventually making its way down to the foundations, you can add up all the loads together for a total of 250 pounds per square foot, and then just multiply by the 900 square foot. So that's one way to do it, yes. is we say, all right, this is the total uh, of the uh, pounds. If we think of them all together, these all like one, two, and three all added together. So that would then be 250 times 900, which, uh, let's see, what would that be? Um, that would be 225,000 pounds. So obviously when you're out in the working force and stuff, you'll have nice little column load takedown charts and such. But, you know, you're in the exam, you have like one minute, one minute, 30 seconds to get this through. So let's, you know, think about it globally. Don't get so bogged down with the numbers and uh, look at it as, you know, how can I get through this within the next minute? Um, and so the next portion is, is now what we have to do is take, we took our pounds per square foot loading, now converted it into the actual point load that's going into the column and hence the foundations. Now we have to look at it in terms of that load once it gets down to the foundations, gets spread out onto the footing as well. So we're spreading that load onto the footing which eventually goes into the dirt. So, so we're trying to spread it out as much as possible. And so in this uh, problem, it tells us that the, the footing below is five foot nine inches in each direction, a square footing. And so the area of the footing, I don't have this off the top of my head, is 33 square feet. Okay, so you're looking to find the area of the footing. So the, the you know, the, the, if you imagine the footing is uh, square with the column coming down in the middle, right? So uh, we're looking for the, the actual area of the footing on the underside there. So how much soil is pushing back as the load is pushing down through that concrete? Right. Uh, so we have 33 square feet. And what does that tell us? That tells us that the load, the 225,000 pounds, is getting kind of smeared and spread out within that 33 foot squared. So is smeared, is that a highly technical yeah, structure term? Oh yeah, very, term? very technical. Okay. <laughs> so uh, effectively, we're just going to take uh, this 225 and divide it by 33 right. in order to find out per each individual square foot, how much of that load would we have to be putting on? And that turns out to be oh. about 6,800. 6,805 pounds per square foot. 6,805 pounds per square foot. Uh, yeah. Yep. Uh, okay, so we now know that we have six, oh, well over 6,000 pounds per square foot of total load coming down through this column after you add up all the tributary areas. Uh, it's coming down to the footing uh, and then the footing is spreading out, and it's spreading. It's big enough that we've made it big enough so that we're getting this amount of total load per square foot of load onto each square foot of the soil. Yes. So, so therefore, what does that tell us? Well, it tells us that now we have to find an allowable bearing pressure. So the soil has to be able to hold up 6,805 pounds per square foot. Um, and so we have to show that the soil has a capacity that's larger than the 6,800. And so the closest one is, would be 7,000 pounds per square foot. And the 6,000 would not be right because it's too right. low. It's close, but it's too low. Definitely not 3,000. And 9,000 would be very safe. Yes. Uh, but what we need to have is uh, the 7,000. Yep. And so... Where do you get these numbers? You have a geotechnical engineer who provides these numbers for us, the engineers and the architects, so that we can design these buildings. And so, you know, you can go back to your geotechnical engineer and say, hey, can we get 7,000 on our site? And they'll provide you a report, and you'll be able to pick it off of, off of that report.
Yeah, and so it just means that you're you know to look for yes. the seven thousand. And if let's say it came back and it didn't quite make it, then you'd probably start looking in. Well, maybe our five nine by five nine is isn't big enough. We need more soil uh, if because the PSF was too low and we couldn't get the soil to make the numbers work. Right. This would be that kind of thing that you would do early on, right. and then you're essentially testing to see if our if we made the best guess. Yep. And then if Say, example, um, the capacity is only 2,000 in the soil. What would you do? We would look into a different kind of foundation systems, perhaps, maybe um, change how that load is distributed within the building. But generally, we would go to a higher capacity foundation system. So you're not going to just go and like cheat the soil report and <laughs> no. scratch it out and use <laughs> no. white out or something like that. Okay. No, so don't not. do that. All right. <laughs> Uh, okay, that's great. Uh, I think that's pretty straightforward. And obviously, there's a couple different ways we could have added these numbers together. We could have, you, the way you just did it was you made the 250 PSF total and then multiplied that 900. We could have done those individually by floor and then added them up separately. It's all the same numbers. It is all the right? same numbers, but I'm an engineer. I like Keep to it be simple. efficient. Yep. <laughs>